Hey everybody, welcome to Crady Lab. People that know me would say my background may read like a police blotter, but it does include robotics and model aircraft. And when I discovered multi-rotors in 2013, I knew I had to build one. My first quadcopter was based on the Iron Man 650 frame, and since then I've enjoyed building a number of different multi-rotors, but I've always been left disappointed that actually flying them was never as much fun as the build, and certainly never approached the joy I got from the RC models of my youth. That brings me to the Hobby King Bixler 3. I first saw this plane on Andrew Newton's channel and was impressed with the Bixler's gentle flight characteristics, a feature that makes it ideal for someone who wants to ease back into flying fixed wing after a 40 year hiatus. I purchased the kit version of the Bixler because I wanted to choose my own hardware and electronics and selected the F405 wing flight controller for several reasons. With its upright USB port and use of standard 0.1 pin headers, the wing is ideal for mounting deep within a fuselage where accessibility is limited to the top of the board. It also benefits from built-in vibration damping, 6 UARTs, 8 servo ports, clean and robust 5 and 3 volt supply rails, and it's fully compatible with both iNav and ArduPilot firmware. I also made cabling for a Bluetooth module. I don't plan to leave the module on board permanently, but it will come in handy for quick field adjustments that would otherwise require removing the wing. Rather than attach the controller directly to the foam interior, I made a plate from Birch 5 ply and mounted the controller to that using VHB tape. The plate will then be glued permanently into place while the controller can still be easily removed if needed. Hobby King specs a 2200 milliamp hour 3S battery for the Bixler 3, but I had a couple of 3000 milliamp hour batteries on hand that I wanted to use instead. The cavity within the battery compartment isn't really set up for a battery that large, so I made a tray that will not only secure the battery, but allow me to move it fore and aft as needed to adjust the CG. The tray is held in place at the front by the existing foam reinforcement ribs and at the rear by two M3 embedded nuts I installed. I also made a small plywood bulkhead that sits forward of the tray to help hold back the battery on hard landings. The kit version of the Bix doesn't come with servos or a motor, but it does come with a motor mount. Unfortunately, the mount they include is a really poor design because once you install the motor and mount, it's impossible to remove either and you can't even access the rear bearing for oiling. The good news is there are a couple of nice aftermarket mounts out there and I spotted this beauty on Andrew Newton's channel. It's made by Small Parts CNC and allows you to both service the motor and adjust its height to accommodate larger props like I've done here. The soft antennas that came with the FreeSky receiver would have made mounting difficult for my needs, so I opted to replace them with more substantial T-type dipoles and installed them at 90 degrees from each other to optimize reception. The radio itself is removable and held in place by a cable tie that's secured to a small piece of plywood glued to the interior wall. The Bixler fuselage doesn't come with holes for LEDs, so I drilled my own by heating the shank of a 5mm drill bit and pressing it into the foam. This method of hot drilling takes some practice, and I used a scrap of EPO foam to develop a technique that produced clean holes. I had bad luck with the batch of NeoPixel LEDs I got from Adafruit, but I still wanted to use the holes I drilled. So I created replacements from a pair of SMD RGB LEDs by trimming the leads from a couple of clear 5mm LEDs and gluing them to the SMDs to use as bespoke lenses.
At some point, I want to experiment with automated landings, so I added a TF Mini LiDAR module to the underside of the starboard wing. Both ArduPilot and iNav support the TF Mini, but so far only ArduPilot supports it with fixed wing aircraft and automated landings, a feature I'm hoping iNav will add before too long. The module itself is pretty small, but it is boxy, so I created a fairing from the tip of an unused wheel pant to try and smooth the airflow around it. Foam hinges will eventually wear out and begin to tear, and one way to help mitigate that is by adding a bit of Blenderm tape to reinforce the hinge line. It's lightweight, and on white foam it's nearly invisible. I used Tower Pro digital servos in the wings, but I chose to use these high-tech digital servos for the elevator and rudder because I already had them on hand. They all have metal gears, and the operation of both the Tower Pros and the high tech seem equally smooth. Placing the GPS receiver at the rear seemed like a no-brainer, but to route the wiring, I needed to create a trench in one side of the fuselage by dragging a hot soldering iron down its length. At the same time, I also took the opportunity to remove the tailwheel assembly. I'll be flying the BICs from grass, so there's no point in installing landing gear I'll never use, and I can apply the weight savings to the larger battery and other accessories. The Bixler ships with two canopy options, one smooth and aerodynamic made from EPO foam, and another intended for FPV gear made from lightweight plywood. Both are held in place by a tab in front and magnets at the rear. One of the first mods I made to the FPV pod was opening up its underside. This lightened the pod and provides access to wiring. The servo I selected for the gimbal isn't digital, but it is fast and smooth and provides about 3.5 kg of torque, which should be more than enough to overcome the drag of the camera and DVR assembly. I've seen good reviews for AKK video transmitters and decided to try their new FX2 Dominator. It supports smart audio, has an onboard microphone, and is rated at a claimed 2 watts of output power. That kind of power means a lot of heat needs to be dissipated, and the Dominator has heat sinks on both sides, which means mounting on standoffs for good airflow is a must. I don't intend to maiden the Bix with the FPV pod in place, so I weighted the foam canopy with lead to match the weight of the pod. This way the Bix won't require re-trimming and should fly virtually the same with either the pod or canopy installed. And here is the fuselage ready for final assembly. As you can see, there's lots of connectors in the wiring harness, and I'm a firm believer in using color-coded shells and labels to help prevent misconnections. I made an effort to try and keep the internals tidy with an eye toward reliability and ease of maintenance while maintaining the correct CG. Congratulations to everyone who made it this far, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, well then give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions about the build, please put them in the comments section, and I'll answer them as best I can. I've included links in the description to the components I used and to Andrew Newton's YouTube channel. That's it for now, and as always, thanks for watching.